everyone, it's Pat from Seattle Coffee Gear and I'm here today with another uh, look at and comparison of some entry level grinders, this time for espresso. So if you haven't checked out our brew grinder video and you're in the market for a brew grinder, definitely give that a look. Today though, we're going to be doing kind of a similar approach, but we're gonna be talking about espresso grinders that vary a little bit in price, but these are all some of the grinders that we would generally recommend to people that are looking to get into espresso for the first time brewing from a semi-automatic espresso machine. So we've got the classic Ranchilio Rocky. We've got a Barazza Sete AP30. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that name and this one in a, in a few minutes. We've got a Breville Smart Grinder Pro, and then we've got the Eureka Minion Note. So let's talk first about some of the things that uh, these grinders have in common, at least these three, because the Note is gonna be the one that's the most kind of separate from these three in terms of feature set. But these three are all gonna have uh, stepped grind settings. They're all actually going to be usable for both espresso and other brew methods. But like we say all the time, we definitely recommend having a separate brew and espresso grinder because while you can swap these back and forth, there's a good chance you're gonna be using different coffee for different brew methods, so it can be a pain to switch them out. And then changing the settings back and forth can be a pain because if you have coffee in the grinder, you really should be changing them out when you are uh, changing the setting when you're grinding. So you end up wasting some grounds if you're changing the settings. Uh, and uh, it's just generally easier from a workflow perspective to have multiple grinders. If that's not possible for you, then you can get by with using these grinders for different brew methods. Um, it's also worth noting though that if you do that, you're not going to be able to get the hyperfine settings that you might want for getting that tricky single origin dialed in for an, an espresso shot, and you might have trouble on the coarser end if you want like a really coarse grind for cold brew. So lots of reasons to get a brew and espresso grinder, but these are also sort of the three um, that I would recommend if you are, have your heart set on doing both with your grinder. So let's look at first the Ranchilio Rocky. This one is, at this time, the most expensive of the grinders in this lineup. Um, prices can change, so that may be different depending on when you look at it, but the reason for that is that it's just a very solidly built, I mean, these things are tanks, right? Like, these grinders have been around for a really long time, and it's a solidly built piece of hardware. It's got real simple operation. One thing that's a little bit different from uh, other grinders that have stepped adjusters is that you actually hold this button down and then move the hopper. I don't want to change it while uh, I have beans in it because it can clog up the grinder, but yeah, you hold that button down, rotate the, the hopper to get your grind setting. And that can feel like it's a stepless because you're not clicking along a path, but when you release that lever and it slots into place, it is slotting into a stepped setting. So it is still a stepped grinder in that way. Uh, other than that, really simple operation on this one. You've got your on-off switch down here, and then you just have a switch that you hold down to brew. So it may seem odd that this one is as expensive as it is, given that it has such uh, like simple features. But you know, it also has this metal casing, um, and the components on the inside are really high quality. So it's a grinder that can last you a really long time. Um, not that some of these don't, but this one you're definitely paying for that kind of um, really high quality d build and components and everything, uh, even though it's a little bit light on features. So good grinder if you wanna do both espresso and brew, and if you wanna buy one grinder and you're not concerned about like upgrading in the future, that's one thing to keep in mind uh, with all of these is that these are kind of grinders that you might grow out of eventually depending on what kind of machine you're using them with. The Rocky is sort of designed to be your long time grinder but it might not have the same level of ground quality as a even more expensive grinder. But we'll talk about grinding in a little bit. Feature-wise on the Cite over here. So this one is a little bit confusing because there are a few different Cite models. You got the 270, the 270 WI, you've got this AP. And what the AP stands for here is all purpose. So that's why this one is kind of one that can rotate through a wider range of settings to go from espresso to drip brewing and uh, and a little coarser than that. Sort of the same problems with all of them uh, in terms of the range for like super fine and super coarse. 
but this is that is what the AP in this name stands for. If you like the other stuff about this grinder and you want one that is espresso specific, the 270 is a little bit more expensive, but it does have that kind of um, more uh, espresso range focused uh, design. So this one in terms of controls, real simple as well, uh, except you do get some time dosing with this one. So you can set up the amount of time that you want the grounds to go for, which is a little bit more useful in a espresso grinder than it is in a brew grinder because um, you once you have it dialed in, the timing should be pretty consistent from grind to grind. And that increases, the consistency increases as you step up in price as well. So um, this one though is a good starting point in terms of its time dosing. You should get fairly consistent results with it if you dial in a time. Um, in terms of operation, it's real simple. It's got a porter filter fork right here that you can rest your porter filter in and a play pause button up here for starting to grind. The grind setting adjuster is down here. It's a little bit stiff. Um, so if it feels like it's not adjusting and you have to give it a little bit of oomph, that's just how this grinder works. Um, but there's a lot of nice features about this one. The speed is pretty good. It's consistent and it's fairly low retention in my experience. We'll test that in just a few minutes as well. So. Definitely a strong option. And then we've got Breville Smart Grinder Pro. This one is gonna be the most affordable option here. Um, and it's actually a pretty great deal given its price. Uh, pretty good design and casing. And it has a pretty good set of features here with the time dosing. You can save two different dose levels for single or double shots. Or if you wanted to use it for brew and espresso, you could use those two settings to, to have one for your shots and one for your, for your brew grinding. Um, it has a adjuster knob over here that's really easy to adjust. And it actually gives you the um, setting on the display, which is kind of cool. Um, so definitely a nice grinder. It has some really cool stuff in the base too. Like I love that when you pop out the little uh, tray, it has instructions for cleaning it underneath there. And it also will store tools and stuff down there. Um, the reason that this one uh, comes in as the most affordable, despite being pretty feature rich, is it definitely is the one that is going to have kind of the most struggles when going all the way fine and all the way coarse in my experience. And this one is probably not gonna last you as long as say a Rocky um, or a Note. So this is a really decent grinder at this price point in terms of features and performance but you might expect to replace it in three to five years instead of like 10 to 20 plus with these couple of grinders and you know, five to 10 years maybe with one of the Brazza grinders. It's not a guarantee, your mileage may vary, may vary. it all depends on maintenance and um, your like he how heavy you use it. But uh, definitely this one being the most affordable, it's, it's a great deal still, but you might expect to replace it a little sooner than the other ones. And then the one that is, from a feature perspective, kind of the most unique here is the Eureka Minion Note. And the reason for that is really its grind adjust. So the operation of this grinder is really simple. You have just like a simple slide for locking the hopper versus more uh, consistent locking mechanisms here. Angelio doesn't have that, but uh, it also has like a simple push button operation, which is more on par with what the Ranchilio has in terms of how you use it. Um, and uh, it does normally, it has a porter filter fork that you can insert that sits here um, that you can set your porter filter in. I have it off because we're gonna be grinding onto a plate in a few minutes, so it's a little easier to access it this way. But really the stepped grind adjust is gonna be the thing that sets it apart from these other grinders. Uh, step less, I should say. So what a stepless grind adjust does is it lets you set the grind, the burr level and how fine the grind is on a stepless uh, like range. So there is no like clicks. So you can get the exact grind level that you want. That's something that is pretty highly desirable in espresso grinders um, because you're gonna be able to dial in really tricky single origins and other coffees with that sort of precision grind adjustment. And it also means that you can take it to very fine levels as you bring it down to the grinders basically touching, 
you have to be careful with that when you dial it in because you don't want to lock it up by grinding the burrs together. But um, it's a really good feature that is generally found in pretty expensive grinders. I mean, the other grinders in the Minion line definitely increase in price. So this one has kind of Spartan features, but it does have that stepless grind adjust, which is a really great thing if you're willing to kind of jump in and learn at a kind of higher level that makes this one a really great pick for your first grinder because you're gonna be able to start learning with those stepless uh, adjustments right out of the gate. So really good value for the price, even though it comes in more expensive than like the uh, Smart Grinder Pro and the Satay, it has that feature that's really going to be um, pretty definitive if you end up liking to the, the hobby aspect of brewing your own espresso and you really wanna get the most flavor out of your coffee. All right, so now we're gonna do some comparisons between the different grinds uh, in terms of like time and retention of these different grinders. I have a plate here to grind on. Uh, so let's get started. So first up, let's take a look at the Rockies. Uh, speed, consistency. I have all these grinders set to roughly the same setting. They differ a little bit, obviously, so bear with me, but you should get pretty consistent results across them so you can see sort of what their time and retention looks like. So I'm gonna do five seconds on the ones that have timers, and I'm going to guesstimate five seconds on the ones that do not. So let's start with the Rocky. So we're getting pretty good here. We got some clumping. Um, that's kind of to be expected with this grinder, pretty common, um, and you know, good amount to kind of start with to get a baseline from the Rocky here. Let's do a quick tap test to see what kind of retention we have. Pretty low, so very little in there. That's really great to see. Um, grind retention is definitely one of the things that bugs me the most about different grinders, so um, nice to see this one doing a good job there. Noise level, you can kind of hear it. You'll be able to hear it in comparison to the other ones. It's fine, it sounds like a coffee grinder. I like the tone of it okay. It's a little bit deeper, not super high pitched. So let's look at the Satay next. So a little bit faster grind on this one, which is also to be expected. Um, notice we're getting a little bit of retention falling here still. If we tap this guy quite a bit in there, could have to do with it needing to be cleaned, but uh, generally we keep these in pretty good shape. So not the best from a retention perspective, though it does grind pretty fast and we get a pretty good level of consistency, uh, easily on par with the Rocky here and less clumping all around as well, which is really nice for espresso grinding in particular because it makes your job of like kind of tapping at level and everything and tamping a little bit easier. So pretty good results, not the best from a retention standpoint, but Let's try the uh, Smart Grinder. Also, noise-wise, not a huge fan of the Satay's tone personally, but that's all down to your to your kind of your ear. So this one's a little slower than the Satay. My plate couldn't get all the way in, so we've got a little bit of grinds back here. So fairly comparable if you added that to the plate. In fact, let's do this comparable to the Satay. The Satay is a little bit faster, just kind of what it's known for. Here we're seeing a little bit of retention. Not as bad as the Satay though in this test. Um, in terms of grind quality, it's looking good. Pretty minimal clumping here for, especially considering the price of this grinder. Um, so generally really good performance. I like the sound on this one quite a bit. I think it's got a kind of nice bassier tone and it's not particularly loud at all. So. Um, that's a pretty good performance from this one. Now let's check out the Note. So also kind of on the slower side, and we are seeing a little bit of clumping with the Note, but um, it's honestly not too bad. Uh, it's, it's not as noticeable as with uh, the, um, the other ones that we looked at. And uh, speed-wise, it's pretty comparable to the Rocky and the Smart Grinder Pro. Again, a little bit slower than the Satay, 
But really the, the star here is the ground quality and consistency on this grinder is really, really good. And you really see that stepless come into play here because um, this is like really, really quality grinds from that perspective. Um, noise wise, I also think it's the quiet to, quietest to my ear, slightly higher pitched than the Smart Grinder Pro, but a little bit quieter. So I like it for that reason as well. Let's take a look at the retention. Really low, almost nothing. Um, definitely on par with the uh, Rocky. So those are some of the results from the actual grind test here. I think really what it comes down to is if you want that sort of precision grinder that you're gonna be able to keep for a really long time without needing to upgrade, the uh, Note is a really good option. If you want something that is gonna get you started for the least amount of money, that's where the Smart Grinder Pro comes into play. And these other two grinders are gonna be more for if you want some of their specific um, pros, like the speed of the Sate or the kind of tank-like nature of the Rocky. Um, but they all definitely have their place depending on what you're looking for out of a grinder. So thanks so much for watching. I know this was a lot of information in this video. Um, make sure if you're interested in any of these, you go back and check out some of the other content we have around them from comparisons to reviews. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Get subscribed for more content like this in the future. We'll be looking at other different kinds of machines in this way coming up over the rest of the year. Thanks. Oh, yes.